Hi, it's Sandy Parker, and welcome to Crafting for Almost Everyone. The really nice people at Arteza Markers, actually all kind of products, decided to send me another product to try out, and this time I'm trying out their fabric markers. I hope you'll stay tuned. They sent me this set of Arteza markers, and I, well, first they asked me what I would like, and I said, I'd really like to try these fabric markers because um, I, a lot of their products were for a real artist, and since I'm more of a crafter than an artist, I thought these fabric markers would be fun to use. And so what I did is I took my little square dot, or, yeah, square, rectangle, I'm going to learn my shapes at some point, uh, I'm t I took my little rectangle die and I just cut out from this cardboard and I thought what I would do is do a rainbow pattern on this apron. For those of you who don't know me very well, you don't know that I'm kind of a messy crafter and, uh, oh, I got all kinds of stuff under here, um, and so I didn't really want to keep ruining my clothes, so I bought this apron at AC Moore. Hold on, I have a craft mat under here, just in case I need it. Um, anyway, I bought this, it's called a craft apron with two pockets. It's 20 inches by 28 inches, and obviously someone with some skill set did this one, but I really wanted to do something that was more in keeping with a rainbow design. So I wasn't sure if I would need my craft mat or not, and what I'm going to use it for, I have two thoughts here. I was either going to use this piece of cardboard or my craft mat. I think that piece of cardboard will work just fine. I'm going to stick something in my pockets because that's where I want to do my project. And what I thought I would do is do a rainbow of these little rectangular shapes. And if you know your rainbow colors, I'm going to go through them. This is tomato red. It's uh, There's an acronym for it. It's Roy G. Biff. And so R is red. O, obviously, is orange. Y is yellow, G is a green, and I think I'm going to use, I don't know, there's so many greens to choose from. I think I'm going to choose olive green, just because I kind of dig it. Um, then blue, I only have a blue, indigo, and I, uh, I think for indigo, I don't know, I might use night sky blue. And then violet is our last color. And the closest I have to that is lilac, orchid, or lavender. I don't know if you can see those colors. I think I'm going to try this one. So those are the colors we're going to go with. So I need to make sure that I can fit one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these in, in this spot. And I thought I would kind of start maybe like this. And the reason I'm using this triang or, yeah, triangle, now I'm calling it a triangle. For those of you who are not skilled in shapes, I'm going to keep telling you a different shape until you go, what is the matter with her? Is she on medications? Frankly, I am, but that's not what I'm, you know, that's not our, my reasoning for why I'm having the issues with my shapes. I just apparently can't remember what they are. So I'm going to use the red marker. And I am going to go over the information that it, that they give you on the box so you know exactly what it says about um, treating it and washing it, things like that, in case you were interested in them. And I'm just trying to make sure that I hold my piece of cardboard in place. See why I have extra cardboard? Because if I didn't have that cardboard there, that red would have been all over my apron. I'm trying to cover color this in so I don't have any real um, vacant spots. You know spots where you can see through. And that was one of the reasons I never liked fabric markers is because you always seem to be able to see a lot through it. You know what I'm saying? Fabric. Okay. There's red. Now before I go any further, let me give you the information on the packaging about what it says about using them. It says how to use them. You open the markers with a gentle clockwise twist. Obviously that's not what I needed to know. Place any pad underneath the fabric. 
thank goodness I did do that. And it says you want to let your, your drawing dry for 12 to 24 hours. That's important. And you should store them horizontally like most markers. Fabric care. For best results, wash the fabric in cold water with a neutral detergent. Hang to dry to keep colors looking new and bright. Suitable for working on jeans, t-shirts, tennis shoes, backpacks, jackets, sweatshirts, and more. My camera cut out right there when I was showing you the color swatches or the, the colors on the box. So I'll just show them to you one more time. It might be better if I just showed you them here at the top, huh? How about that? Can you see them there? In addition to the ones I have. And this is a set of 24. I don't know if they have a bigger set or not, but um, I do know that they have that many. As for why I chose a rainbow, I was thinking it was an artistic thing. You know, rainbows of colors, the color wheel. That was what I was going with. I don't know. It, and uh, the other thing I was thinking was, how badly could I screw this up? And that was the other thought I had. Do you think other YouTubers worry that um, they're going to screw up as badly as I worry about screwing up? I don't think they do. Although I will say Gina Kay's daughter, Raina Kay, if you've never seen her videos, you should watch them because she's really, really funny. Um, she comes off about like the way I feel about making things. She always seems like she's afraid she's going to screw something up, which is why I always worry about things because I'm pretty sure I am going to screw things up. And when I don't, I'm always so surprised. It's always a mystery to me how I can do things and do it without screwing it up the first time. Because if you've been on my channel for very long, you know I have had some big, big faux pas. And every time I do a video using a knife of any kind, like the pumpkin video, if you haven't seen my pumpkin video of the felt pumpkin, you should look at that because that was really impressive for me because you know I usually as I said can screw things up pretty badly and the fact that that pumpkin came out perfectly the first time without having any instructions and just winging it 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 kind of um, was something for me to be proud of is all I have to say when Rich saw it for the first time he was like wow how'd you do that I was like I don't know I just did it Anyway, I don't think I'm going to make you sit here and watch me color these. I'm going to clearly <clears throat> go from color to color and then do it in a rainbow. I want to have them close enough together that hopefully I can get them all on, um, on here. If I can't, then I'll put six here and then uh, I might do something at the top. But um, I'll... I'll come back after I've done these six. As I thought I could only get six on there, so I took another die and I cut circles out of cardboard. And if you're wondering why I cut out uh, several uh, circles or more than one rectangle, and that's because when you're doing this, you're going to get ink on the sides of your circles or your rectangle. So you want to be careful to make sure that you don't keep using it. Like, um, on this yellow one, because, you know, you weren't here to, to stop me, the, I got a little bit of orange here at the bottom because it, it uh, was on the edge, and I went from left to right and clearly got a little bit of that on there. So I, you know, screwed that up. So I thought I'd go with some bright tones. I'm going to go with tangerine, bubblegum pink, raspberry, lime green, and sky blue. I don't know how bright they are, but I'm assuming they're bright because the other colors um, are fairly frisky. All right, I don't know. Let's see. I think I'm going to use the raspberry over here first. And I'm going to use the circle. You might not, I might not even be in frame right now. And if I'm not, I apologize. I hope I am. But I'll quickly move on to another color and I'll go back to that raspberry in a little bit so that you can see another color instead of that. Because I didn't know I was going to screw that up. All right, I think I'm going to go with maybe the lime green over here. And they, they do have a big nib which is, I think they call that, no, I don't know what they call that. I was going to say that's a bullet point, but I don't think that's what they call that. We'll call this a big tip, and we'll call this a small tip. 
And so um, I'm using my big artistic terms on you. I know you're thinking to yourself, geez, Sandy, you know a lot about art. I know. I do. Well, you know, but that's the... Uh, that's what it means to be a crafter on YouTube for this long. I've learned all these terms, or not. And I think you know the, the answer to that, and that is, I don't know anything. But I keep trying, and that's all that really matters, right? Okay, I'm going to go over here and do the green, because I really like this green. I have a thing about this color green, this bright green. I like to buy clothes in these bright colors. I don't know about the rest of you, but uh, just because I'm old doesn't mean I have to wear d b dark, sad colors. I want to wear bright colors when I'm out, so I wear a lot of bright tones. Not completely, like I wouldn't wear an outfit that was all this color green, because that might be a little scary, but I would wear a lot of pops of that color green. Sure, why not? I love this turquoise color, too. Here's what I've figured out about these, and for those of you who have fabric markers, you probably already understand this, but the darker colors really show every little mark of fabric, and by mark of fabric I mean, you know, the stitching of the fabric, you can really see that, at least I can really see that when I'm when I'm playing with the darker colors. I don't know, see the yellow? It looks like all the yellow has seeped into all of the fibers, but you look at the dark green, you can really see the fibers in between. So that's what, I'm, that's what I mean by, you know, you can see you can see that it more with the darker colors. So I figured if I went back and forth in different directions that I could really cover most of those marks. And on the small little circles you definitely can so that's another thing I would suggest if you're going to do this find a pattern that's smaller that you can really cover the whole image well like this green circle I can go back across let's see if I can make it as clean looking as the other one is so after I made all my rectangles and the circles all around I decided to connect them with circles and when I did that, I used three different colors. This was a turquoise, and this was a dark blue, and this is a black, but they all look black to me. So once I did that, I thought, well, you know what? Maybe I'll take one of my dyes, and this is a Tim Holtz alteration. It's called Tattered Florals, and it makes four different unusual shaped flowers that I really like. And here's one of them. So what I thought I would do is take my Fabri-Tec glue and lay them right here like that and glue them down and then I have these littler flowers that I sewed some flower shaped buttons to the yellow ones and now I'm going to show you how I'm going to sew the kind of salmon-y colored button to the yellow ones. I only wanted to show you this once because I'm not sure if any of you have hand or wrist issues and if you don't have this tool in particular you're going to want to get it. It's very very inexpensive. This is what it looks like. It's uh, metal. I hopefully you can see it against that. It's metal and it's got that little weird loop thing on the end. You put that through the eye of your needle and I buy needles that have big eyes on them because it's easier for me to work with because I'm old and I can't see well. You know how that goes. Anyway, um, so you just put your, I'm using embroidery floss, it's like three strands of it because I want you to be able to see it. You put that through that little um, metal loop and that's, you pull the metal loop out and then you've threaded your, your needle. It makes things so much easier for me and um, I think you get three or four of those for a couple dollars and they're well worth it. I make my knot far enough from the end and I'll show you why I do that because when I, I'm going to run my needle through kind of the center of my flower because when I do this what I like to do is when I tie it off at the end Hold on, get in there. When I tie it off after I've um, done my button, I like to make sure that it's easier to knot, and that's how I do it to make it easy to knot. So I'm just going to do two uh, strands of this. Hold on, i got to see where my hole is. 
you know, if you weren't on camera, you, these things don't happen where you can't find the, the needle hole. But when you're on camera, you struggle with things like this. Okay, so once you've done two rows, then you have this our piece in the back that's now entangled with the rest of it. Hold on, let me get that out of there. Okay. So here's my extra string. And this is how I tie my knots. I just wrap my my big long string around the piece I'm holding. I'm holding that little teeny tiny piece. And then I pull it. And I like to do a double knot. So I'm still holding that little end and I just wrap around and stick it through there and hold on to that little string. Yeah, my fingers don't work that great. As you know, there you go. And then you just cut it off. So I'm not going to make you watch me do the other um, two yellow ones. i got to cut this off. And I'll be back after I've cut them off and we'll go on to my next plan of attack and that will be putting things in place. I have some other flowers I'm going to put down but I mean I really wanted this to be something that was fun for me that when I put it on it made me feel creative and so that's what I was hoping for. So we're going to shoot for that. I'll be back when I'm done sewing them together. So at this point I have glued everything down except this flower. I just thought I would kind of walk you through all I did and basically uh, I just made sure I got the tips around the center. It's important that you get the edges, basically. And I didn't want to miss any of those spots that might be problematic. And the glue I'm using is made by Beacon. It's called Fabrifix, F-A-B-R-I-F-I-X. I'll show you that the bottle in a second so you can see it. But I wanted to make sure that you knew the kind, there's the name of it. I bought mine at Joann's and uh, I like it. It's it's kind of like hot glue without the hot part. It's runny like that. It makes it kind of hard to work because of the strings, but it does a nice job of holding fabric down and in place like this. So all of mine are attached now and then I have three more that I have for the top of my apron. This is uh, the canvas apron with two pockets. This is what I bought at AC Moore. It's uh, basically just your average craft store, you know, your big box store in uh, United States. I'm not sure if it's anywhere else. Okay, and these ones I use the same die and I cut them out and then I use a circle die, a little circle die, and I just cut the centers out and so then what I thought I would do is just glue all of them in place like that so that the top of my apron has a little bit of decoration on it and so I'm just going to glue one of these down with you because I don't think you need to watch me glue a bunch of flowers down but this one is a little bit different because the center is um, not from the same felt so I'm kind of gluing them down as, a, as one. I don't know if you can see that Hopefully you can, and I'm hoping it doesn't come apart when I put it in place, and it didn't, which is nice, and then I'm just going to push it down. Oh, one thing I will tell you about this glue that's kind of weird, and I don't know why it does this, it eats your fingernail polish. See, it ate my thumbnail and my fingernail, or my, my pointer finger. Weird, huh? Anyway, so I'll glue the rest of these down, and I'll be back, because I have one more thing I want to do to make my... Ooh, to make my apron fun and frisky. So lastly what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my glitter, no, I'm going to take my glue, see I make things up all the time of what I'm really going to do. I took my glue <clears throat> and I went into the center of all my big flowers. I'm only doing the center centers of those because I wanted to accentuate the color underneath and so I'm taking black glitter. I think it's black. It might be navy blue, but it looks black to me. I don't even know the name of the maker of this glitter. If any of you know, it doesn't say on the bottom. Oh, I got glue on me. And I thought what I would do is take a spoon. A spoonful of glitter makes the medicine go down. I just, you know, I have issues. And I'm just going to carefully dump it into the center of that. 
Yeah, I probably won't be able to get that out of there at any point in the near future, but I'm still going to do it. I can dump it back into the bottle if I get it off of my outfit, apron. And then all I'm going to do is press down on it. I have a piece of wax paper under my apron. And what I'm going to do when I'm done is I'm going to um, dump the dump this onto my glitter any glitter that comes off but I'm pushing in with my spoon to make sure that it does stay in the glue and it adheres well to it if you've um, ever used this glue before let me know if you've ever tried washing glitter with it but I I, I am pretty sure it's gonna work I don't know why I'm pretty sure it's gonna work but I am I have high hopes for it okay let me dump this off and I'll come back and we'll talk about how it came out. So here's my end result of my apron. I hope you can see the black glitter here in the bottom section and that you see all of my little flowers. I meant to say that I had coffee filters underneath it and not uh, wax paper, but coffee filters do a great job of taking excess um, glitter off. So what I did in the places I had too much glitter is I just kind of picked it up with the, you know, I wiped it off with these and it worked. And um, I don't know about you, but I really want an apron that I can destroy my clothes slash apron instead of my clothes because I have been making a big mess of all my clothes and now I have a really fun artsy thing that I can use. I really appreciate the people from Arteza for giving me the fabric markers and I hope you'll give them a try because they are a lot of fun and maybe you are more artistic than me and are able to draw patterns with them. I'm not that artistic, but I love the idea of making something fun and funky, and that's what I think I got. I hope you give this a thumbs up and subscribe. Please tell your friends about me on social media because you know I love that. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.